Hello and welcome to part three of my Distress Ink uh, video tutorials. I have today. I'm going to be showing you the basic, um, the basics of edge distressing and using browns to kind of just make the edge look a little bit more vintage and a little bit more roughed up. So. I just have this plain piece of cardstock here. It's just vintage cream from Paper Tray Ink, um, and that's just my favorite neutral white-ish cardstock. Um, the first ink I suggested in the last video that you probably saw to buy is Vintage Photo. So I will show you. Buy Vintage Photo. I ink up my Distress Ink tool, which obviously this has some. Um, ink in it already, and if you wanted a really light effect, you wouldn't even need to re-ink it from your last um, application. So I just go and just do little flicking motions like this across here, and that adds a nice little nice border. If I wanted a very dark, um, a dark distressing, you use a little bit more force, like this. And as you can see, that leaves more of a defined edge. You could also go in from the side using your mat. This is what makes it really nice because you can just slide on. You always start off the mat and work your way on, and that avoids getting um, like a full foam print. Because if you just did it like this, you end up with that edge. You see? So and it's it's kinda hard to smooth out afterwards, see? So that's why you move off. You from start on the edge and move on. So we have that. And you can also go in with just the ink pad itself and really make that edge really defined. So you can see that made a difference. Um, now something a little bit more in depth, I guess you could say. Um, using tea dye and vintage photo to create a look that's a little bit more um, subtle along the edges. So I'm going to go in with my tea dye and just start working it from the edges really lightly. I'm just I'm kind of holding it at an angle here so that I'm just getting the color exactly where I want it. And you can see since this color is a bit lighter, you can work further into the card without it being too distracting. So we have that. That's the tea dye. And now that I've added the tea dye, I can go back in with the vintage photo and do that little quick flicking motion down the edge. And it adds that great definition. But it's still lighter than this one. And you know, you can always go back in and add more color too, doing the same technique that you did the tea dye. So that's really cool and that's how you can build layers and add that depth and dimension. You can also do something where you use a distressing tool. This one's from Heidi Swap and she doesn't make this anymore but Tonic has one for Tim Holtz that is just great. I've used it before at um, classes and things like that. I took a few Tim Holtz classes and I used it there and I love it. Um, if this one ever wears out or if I ever get sick of this one, that's what I'm buying next because this one is um, a little bit more flimsy, but it still works just the same as just a blade inside of here. So you can get a just good distressed edge by just putting it in the tool and pressing down slightly and moving it back and forth. Now you can't move back and forth like this across it. You have to do kind of in one direction, otherwise it will rip. But you see, you have this nice distressed shabby edge. Kind of get the little extra pieces off of there. And then you can go back in and this raw edge here will pick up the ink really really well. So you can either go like this and just get the edge there or you can work from the side of the paper again and bring it in like this and even get some vintage photo action in there and really just make that edge really pop like that. So that's one of my favorite techniques um, is combining that with the distress inks because it really just makes it pop and especially with patterned paper since most patterned papers insides are white or cream um, 
if you use this distressing tool edge thing on the edge, it'll really make the ink absorb really well into the side and make make it really just a nice little distressed look. So after I've showed you these techniques, I have an image that I've already went through and colored and stamped. These are from Hero Arts. Um, they're from two different stamp sets. The sentiment is from one. It's called Bold Sentiments, I believe. I'll link it. I'll link it in my blog post. And then this one is the Cute Houses one. Um, and so I've went through, colored these with Copics. I just put. I just stamped this in Memento Black ink. Um, we're not doing any like water techniques or anything like that. So you could do this in any color you want, um, with any medium you want, every, anything like that. But what I want to do is distress this a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just do the techniques that we worked on, where I'm going to go through with my distressing tool and just go through lightly. I'm not distressing this too much because, um, you know, it's not really a card that's grungy per se. It's just I just want it to be a little bit shabby chic. So I finished getting into those edges and you can <laughs> move the little extra pieces off your paper or off your work surface here. Then I'm going to go around the outside with the tea dye ink, just kind of using it as an angle and working on to the image like this. So I've added the tea dye ink all the way around the edges, and don't worry if you get little pieces of paper on your um, ink pad, it doesn't hurt it at all. Um, then I'm just going to go through with the vintage photo, and just like before, really make it define the edge, just by kind of butting it up to the edge. I'm not even really going onto the paper, just kind of going up to the edge. So I'm going to do that around the whole card. Okay, so I went around with the vintage photo. And as you can see, I got a little bit of a streakiness with the vintage photo because I kind of skipped over it, um, if skipped over the edge. So I'm just going to go back in with my tea dye and just kind of soften it up a little bit. It's okay if we're getting a little bit more color. I mean, there isn't any image down here anyways, so it's not like it's covering up anything. But you just want to make it blend in and look um, like you meant to do everything. No streaks. And actually, I'm going to even add a little extra to the corners up here. Because the corners are traditionally where you put the darkest. There we go. So I've added my distressing to the edges. You have a nice little distressed edge here. And it's ready to adhere to your card. Um, I will have the finished card for this in the blog post that accompanies this video. Um, and I hope you have enjoyed learning about the edge, distressing the edges of cards. This is the first basic technique with distressings. And I hope to catch you again next time for the next video in this Distress Ink series. I'm having a lot of fun and I hope you are too. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you again next time.